Hello, welcome to this uh, video podcast. Uh, my name is Cyril Loger. I'm a wireless field application engineer in EMEA. Today we'll be focusing on two of the uh, MS2090A and Neon Tracker, and I will explain you how to demonstrate the fast channel scanning function. Neon is a geo-positioning system that has been developed by TRX Systems in the USA. This NEON solution allows to build indoor and outdoor radio coverage mapping when it's associated with a spectrum analyzer, like the MS2090A. To get the NEON solution working, you will need to install the NEON common software in a laptop and you will need to install the NEON signal mapper in an Android device. To be able to make some indoor radio coverage mapping, the synoptic is quite simple as shown here. You need to have the Neon Tracker, you need to have an Android device, and you need to have a Spectrum Analyzer. The Neon Tracker is paired with Bluetooth to the Android device, and the Android device will share its Wi-Fi hotspot with the Spectrum Analyzer, which will send its data to the Android device. If you need to focus on two outdoor radio coverage mapping, the Synoptic is as follows. The Neon Tracker has to be fixed onto the driver's belt. It's paired with Bluetooth to the Android device. The Android device is sharing its hotspot Wi-Fi to the uh, MS2090A, which can be at the rear of the car. The geolocation of the system will be assured by the uh, GPS of the Android device. Before making any measurement for the indoor coverage mapping, you'll need to um, specify and design some buildings in the Neon Common software. Floor plans will be associated to the uh, building that you will have designed, including upper levels and lower levels. The building can be seen in 2D as right now and three dimension as we can also see right now. Any kind of position, direction, elevation can be shown in the Neon Common software, which is quite easy to manipulate with the mouse. Since we are focusing on the function that needs to be set to do the fast channel scanning in the MS2090A, let's have a look at the different parameters that we'll need to define. For the current example, we'll take the definition of seven different channels uh, by defining the center frequency, the bandwidth, and the resolution bandwidth of each channel, which could be totally different and independent from each other. All channels definition are made in the Neon Signal Mapper Android application. We'll see all the details in the next few slides. The first step you have to define in your Android device is to enable the Wi-Fi sharing so that the MS2090A can uh, synchronize onto the Wi-Fi from the Android hotspot. As we can see here, you have to go into the Wi-Fi menu in the Android menu and ensure that the Wi-Fi is on in the MS2090A. It will scan the wireless networks. Once the MS2090A will have found the network coming from the Wi-Fi hotspot, select this uh, hotspot and wait for the connection. When the wireless communication will have been established, you will see this information in blue on the hotspot name. You'll also be able to know about the IP address of the MS2090A. To make this video comprehensive, let's have a look at all the steps that you will have to go through in the Android device. After successfully sharing the Wi-Fi wireless network, you will be able to go through all these steps as listed here. The Neon Signal Mapper Android application is quite simple to use. You just have to follow the steps on the screen as shown here. You have to ensure the Wi-Fi connection is listed. And then since you already know about the IP address, you have to double check that the instrument will be responding to the commands sent by the Android device. This is what we can see at the moment. In order to perform fast channel scanning measurements, you will have to go into the app settings to be sure that the um, MS2090A over Wi-Fi is in the fast channel scanner function. The colors of the measurement points that will be on the GUI can be 
customized as shown here if you prefer. In the Enritsu settings menu, you will have the capability to define any kind of channels that you want to measure. In that case, just follow the information on the screen by adding, defining the center frequency that you want to scan, and then you have the integration bandwidth where the measurement will be done and integrated, and then you will have to define the resolution bandwidth to be used in the spectrum analyzer, and finally the reference level in case the preamplifier has to be used. All channels are defined individually one by one, including all different setups that you have on the screen. When you have entered all the different settings for each channel, you will have defined the total uh, seven channels that you have to scan with the MS2090 thanks to the Android application. You'll then be ready to perform indoor or outdoor measurements. All the different definitions of the channel that you have made in the Android application will let you sequentially scan the same old channels on the MS2090A as we can see right now on the screen. So it's scanning one by one, one after the other, all the different channels. And since the MS2090A is really fast scanning, you will not have to pay attention to the speed when you walk or the speed when you drive. All channel measurements are stored in the Android device. Once the measurement session has ended, either indoor or outdoor, you have to upload and save the data to the cloud. This upload will allow you later to retrieve the information in the laptop in the Neon Commons software. In the laptop in Neon Commons software, if you go to the file menu, you will be able to go to the cloud and have a look at the uh, file name that you've stored. If it's already stored in your laptop, just double click on it. The measurement session will be loaded into the software and will automatically go where it was uh, recorded on the map. By default, it will choose the Android cell information that has been recorded by the Android device on its own. Then go to the Android 2 Wi-Fi, select any kind of the seven channels you want, click on it, generate the map, it will automatically choose a color code depending on the maximum and minimum amplitude it has found in the total measurement session. If one of your goals is to make some comparison in the different levels, you will be able to select uh, and fix uh, the maximum and minimum amplitude you want for the color code. This allows you to uh, make a comparison between all the different channels one after the other and um, why not making screen copies with the exact same color codes for the amplitude. If you need to understand where you've been during this uh, indoor and or outdoor measurement session, you are able to go backwards in the, in the past and have a look at the uh, progression or the path you've made. You can then define a speed for the replay if you want to go fast or slow, depending on what you want to see. As already mentioned, in addition to the two dimension, you can also get the same measurements uh, being shown in three dimension. As the replay is still going on, depending on the view, you can see the different points where you've been and the measurements that, were, that have been stored by the uh, NEON uh, software. One of the unique points uh, this uh, NEON solution has is that it al allows you to go in the stairs, either you go up or you go down the stairs, and it will follow you on the map and um, you'll be able to see the different floors where you've been still making measurements, whereas with other devices uh, it's not possible to do. For some people who need to uh, ensure that the uh, continuity of the radio is still okay in the stairs, it's very important to be able to um, make these measurements. It allows you to understand where to put repeaters in case the level are too low in the stairs, and um, this allows you also to ensure that emergency carriers can be uh, received in the stairs or why not in the lifts in case you use any lifts to go upstairs or downstairs. In this replay we can also see that we've used the car to go on the road and uh, go uh, over the uh, different directions we needed in the streets to uh, map this uh, channel number one and in fact we've mapped the uh, seven channels at the same time one after the other so the replay can show this very easily. 
It's just a matter of playing with a mouse and to choose 2D or three dimensions. Now that we've seen that the replay can be uh, executed step by step, we can pause it, go to the end, and now have a look at the different channels, one after the other, depending on the one we want to focus on. Choose either three dimension or two dimension to have a look at the uh, information we want to pay attention to. If we now choose channel 2, we can see immediately that the level colors are different since the uh, amplitudes are higher. And since we've uh, fixed the color code of these amplitudes, we can easily compare channel by channel. We can also see on this uh, indoor plan that uh, uh, the software is also showing some kind of heat map, which depends on the, how warm or cool this is, depending on how the amplitude was, was it high or low. If two channels are selected in the Neon Common, be aware that the max of each measurement will be displayed for each color dot. By just looking at this heat map or even the color dots, it's quite easy to understand that this channel number 7 is really with a smaller amplitude compared to the other channels. By focusing onto any specific channels you want, we can see that uh, we are able to display the uh, details that have been recorded by the spectrum analyzer by just choosing any kind of data point you have on the map. You can see all the settings that have been recorded by the spectrum analyzer. If we want to focus onto another channel, it's possible we can generate a new map with a heat map and the color dots, and every dot is recorded. You can see the amplitude and all the settings once again. If you want to move the signal data window on the screen, just highlight this window and move it to the next location where you need it to be on your display. There are plenty other topics that could be dealt around the uh, association of uh, MS2090A and, and the Neon Tracker, but this could be uh, discussed in other video podcasts. Thanks for watching. I hope it was instructive. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you.